Yeah. And literally from the time that we were younger, our parents just exposed us to so much stuff and never even let us think for a minute that, oh, black people don't swim. Right, black people right. don't do this. Black people, like, we're just like, mm -hmm. people do whatever they want. If you want to learn and get good at something, go freaking do it. Definitely. Yeah. Everything from the music that was played, like we'd have playlists with Pearl Jam dude, and Stevie Wonder. Too, dude. Dude. Yeah, all in the same playlist. So we kind of, from a young age, just learned mm -hmm. to appreciate music. We didn't even know really like a genre. They yeah. put yeah, everything true. on. We have Nirvana on. We could have Prince on in that same playlist. Nirvana was black music for us. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Welcome back to Fine 40. In our ongoing quest to find and highlight black excellence in San Diego, this time we've come across We the Commas. Surf alternative R&B. That's how they describe their sound, their band, uh, their brothers and uh they're fantastic so i can't wait for you to get a listen to them i'm so impressed by uh their outlook their approach their story and uh what they're up to with no further ado we the commas uh who are you we the commas we the commas, we the commas. Yeah. so who are we the commas what are y'all doing what are you about well we're a band from southern california mm -hmm. and we're making music that is different, kind of different from the norm of people who look like us you see doing. Yeah. And we're just trying to, one, we just, the music is like at the forefront of everything. We just love music, but also we're trying to spread the message through our music of like, look at us, we look different for people who are doing this kind of music. You can do whatever you want, no matter who you are, what you look like or where you're from. Yeah, breaking, yeah. Bre breaking down racial constructs. Mm -hmm. and yeah, social yeah. constructs, definitely. Exactly. Yes, man, you're going we're right to where I want to go. What say that again? I said, yeah, we're, we're I mean we're black surfers from Carlsbad, so we're just trying to push the boundaries and mm -hmm. show people that really no matter what the color of your skin or really any kind of barrier, just you know, just do whatever you love and whatever you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So how did you come to that? How how did that become your mission? You know, I'm looking at you here and you were all sorts of shades and grades, right? <laughs> yeah, black, right black life. We got all sorts yeah. of, of things there. I'm I myself, so I'll tell you a little bit, you know. My dad's a black man from Memphis, Tennessee. My mother's an immigrant from Ireland. I grew up playing water polo next to oh, you. Yeah. Well, I feel you to the point. Yeah, yeah, you really <laughs> get that's so, you know? so basically, like this has been our story from the time we were born, but even going back further than that, mm -hmm. our parents are both from New York and uh, mm -hmm. Long Island. Mm -hmm. And they were just in, during that time in like the 70s and 80s and just like on the East Coast where they're from, they're saying it was just way more like looked down on looked down upon to do anything that's like out of your own cultural norm mm -hmm. so they were constantly getting crap like my dad played soccer and he would always have people telling him like dude what, what are you doing playing soccer play basketball i play football mm -hmm. and it just like it weighed on him because like i didn't get to fully explore some of the things i wanted to do as a kid mm -hmm. so i'm gonna make sure my kids do freaking everything yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. literally from the time that we were younger our parents just exposed us to so much stuff and never even let us think for a minute that, oh, black people don't swim. Right, black people right. don't do this. Black people, like, we're just like, mm -hmm. people do whatever they want. If you want to learn and get good at something, go freaking do it. Definitely. Yeah. Everything from the music that was played, like we'd have playlists with Pearl Jam dude, and Stevie Wonder. Too, play, yeah, all in the same playlist. So we kind of, from a young age, just learned to appreciate music. We didn't even know really like a genre. They yeah. put yeah, everything on. We have Nirvana on. We mm. could have Prince on in that same playlist. Nirvana was black music for us. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's so, so then tell me this though. So, how has that felt for you in San Diego? So, what, what is your when I say okay, you're from San Diego and you identify as black folks in San Diego? What, what has that been like? I will say it's like I had to build up and get confidence because. I went from, I guess it was like me personally, I think you guys probably have similar. Yeah. I went from living in a sheltered world with my parents or thinking like, yeah, black people do everything. Then kind of going to like a little bit older, like high school and like sometimes junior high where mm -hmm. you get to start to see more of like what certain parts of the world think. Mm -hmm. And that's just like a weird time too of like you're trying to figure yourself out. So I definitely went through like, maybe not as far as like shame, but just kind mm -hmm. of like, embarrassed to say like oh yeah i love rock music or like mm -hmm. getting crap for people saying like oh dude you, you black people don't surf and it like definitely mm -hmm. did weigh on me like it's definitely something that was always in the back of my head of like i stick out like a sore thumb every time i go to the beach or like mm -hmm. every time I, people are staring and stuff and then one day i think i just matured and like 
finally realized you could flip that on its head. It's like, dude, people are looking at you. People are seeing mm -hmm. you're living a message right now. It's not something to be like scared of because like fear is a big thing. It's something that like, this is now your task to go right. out and like be an example and like use that to my advantage. Like it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's way power. more. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like we're lucky to be in this place doing what we do mm -hmm. and not having like a ton of people doing the same thing. I think it's super cool to like open new doors or like try to at least. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Cam, as the youngest, do you think, do you agree with that? So when you see your older brothers doing this? My story is, is yeah. kind of different only because I was in like this more sheltered environment for a shorter amount of time mm -hmm. at a school where I was pretty much, not pretty much the only black kid in like every mm -hmm. single class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the time I got to eighth grade, cause I was only there for from first grade to eighth grade. Mm -hmm. By the time I was going to high school, I was kind of over it. So I went to a bigger public school and I found myself just like really only wanting to hang around kids who are a either doing things that are just like not normal, more creative. Like I'll hang out with the film kids or I'll mm -hmm. hang out with the music kids. And like, like I, I just, after school, like I just want to get all like the weirdos to come back to my house yeah, and, like, yeah. and, stuff. and what yeah. comes with that is like a really diverse group. Like, yeah. You get a lot of like Asian kids, Mexican kids, like yeah. black kids. Yeah. So for me, it was like, I kind of not totally ran away from, but like really was attracted towards hanging around like the outsiders and those that were more different. So for mm. the past couple of years, it's been, I've been kind of choosing to like live more of that kind of lifestyle. Mm. And then now we're, you know, we're doing the band thing. So we're mm. traveling more, but yeah. Yeah, that's that's often that's you. often the way it is, right? Like the youngest one will be the the re even more rebellious. Yeah, like, like, yeah. yeah. Right. Like they both that. graduated from the same high school. Yeah. I didn't really want to go through that high school, so, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that I'm gonna try to find a bigger pond, and that was definitely. God. And so so were that you point. ever in school at the same time? So Jordan, you weren't, you didn't go to school with Lenny then, did you? I did because our school was uh, like preschool all the way to um, senior year yeah, of high school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I was well. in seventh grade when Lenny was a senior and we were on the same campus for a year. So we did get to share similar experiences and, yeah, and then, like have lunch together sometimes and stuff. Got it. God, I'm 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 car characterizing you as the Michael B. Jordan of the group. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 like yeah. <laughs> my daughter's in love with that dude. So you know, <laughs> that's dope. You're Tyler, the creator of my mind. You're Michael B. Jordan. Hey, I come up with I you. Know, so taken. That's <laughs> awesome. You know, I I was uh, enjoying your take on uh, Chance. The rapper's Sunday morning thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right? awesome. I saw you saw that. Hey, yeah, you that's so sick. That was dope. That was dope. And so, you know, I, I'm kind of enamored with that space the chance is in between kind of a faithy type space that's clearly mm -hmm. formed from like spirituality totally. and, yeah. a, and a desire to inspire mixed with just the world, right? Like he's yeah. obviously lived his life Absolutely. to the fullest. Yeah. So how do you all, what's your take on that? As you, I know you're early and just starting to kind of create your platform and your messaging. How do you, how do you weave all that together? Do you, do you have any influences or what's inspiring you? Okay. And that's a, what the fact that you said Chance the Rapper, honestly, for me, mm -hmm. that's like a big one where like, you're seeing someone who started out. I, I know he's always been like spiritual. He's always been like, dude, Chance is so dope. But he started out in more of like, doing probably what like like companies and like A&R people and like representatives are like trying to have him do and then he got to this point where he's like this is my message this is what I want to say and this is how I'm going to say it and he's just been killing it doing that mm -hmm. I think like that's exactly what we want to do is similar yeah. to like a Bieber like Justin Bieber yeah, as well. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, kind of definitely right now in our early stages we want to let our actions kind of speak I guess we don't exactly. have any staunch opinions that we're trying to like enforce mm -hmm. or show anybody right mm -hmm. off the bat definitely want people to um, get to know us mm -hmm. and kind of build their opinions from just our actions and hopefully being men of character and, yeah um, definitely but as far as yeah. preaching anything right now yeah we've done too much of that yeah, I know. I mean, well, Bieber's kind of getting his preach on right now, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, like really baptized good. and stuff. My, my no, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, we respect like, the heck out of that. Like, yeah, we love that's Bieber. where we want to be. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that that sort of modeling, right, yeah. in the world of entertainment and arts is oftentimes hard, right? Like, how do you, yeah. you know, maintain your sense of self and your feet on the ground and, and come from a values-driven place? Yeah. Um, 
you know, so it's lovely to kind of hear you speaking from that area. What? So what? What's the goal? Where, where are you trying to? Where are you trying to go? What? What's? What's next? What's the? Tell me about it. Dude, I would say like as far as just musically goes, we have some pretty big dreams. I mean, we've like we've been doing this together as brothers since I was literally six years old, wow. and it's just now that our music started to get really taken seriously. Yeah, for sure. And we we feel like. We, we could like really do something with this and go pretty far and touring, you know, like touring our albums and having mm -hmm. 120 shows and you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, play a big festival. Yeah. And, and like to that point, even going back to what our parents taught us from a young age is like, do, do you do what you're, what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. It makes me just think of like, when you're doing something that you're passionate about and putting your best effort into something that you feel like you've been like a talent that you've been blessed with, mm. it's so much better to like inspire other people and to help make good things happen because you're like, this is what I love. And I want to show people how to like live in this world and like learn how to live in this world in like the best way possible through the thing that you love. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like the biggest goal, but also like, we're we're living it now too it's just like being able to inspire people through music which we it's like our first love in yeah, this world most definitely exactly. and i think our parents something they instilled in us honestly since we were like since i can remember mm -hmm. um like my dad would come in our room my mom would be there we would sing my dad would play the song on the bongos i yeah. wrote, and he would just sing over and over again he would say two things he would say shine like the star god made you and never let fear hold you back yeah. and those two things I think we want to <laughs> we, we want to spread that message because mm -hmm. definitely life is complicated, but it actually can be very simple. If you one shine like the person you are, so shine like the star God made you, whoever that person is for you, whatever that means to you, mm -hmm. and also never let fear hold you back. And if you yeah. kind of go about life with those two things, which is definitely a place of once we got to that maturity level, we kind of really understand that resonated for us. That definitely perpetuated everything to the next yeah, level. Like, definitely, really, it's it doesn't need to be as complex as everyone makes life out to be. Like if you mm -hmm. shine with the star God made you and you never let fear hold you back. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. I like to your point of like how simple it is. In my opinion, everything in the world that is bad, honestly, or is just like uncomfortable or like takes you away from your goal is rooted in fear. Mm -hmm. So if we can all like strive and like try to help people with this message of like, if you can attack that fear and just be you, Mm -hmm. So many other things will happen after that. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. So I'm, I'm conscious, you know, here we are, black folks in San Diego. So I'm in the same bucket with you. So I would say we have a certain amount of privilege, let's say, comparatively, because I can feel it sure. in you. And I know yeah, I'm a, a biotech dude in San Diego. My life is pretty good, right? That's why we don't <laughs> want to leave San Diego. Right? I know. It's a beautiful place. But not everybody and not everybody looks like us is having that experience. Sure. So, you know, one part of this platform, the whole Fine 40 thing is to go identify alternative imagery so that we're not all just looking the same and acting the same and being pigeonholed with certain, uh, yeah. you know, characteristics. So this is like a beautiful thing from that perspective. But if I'm, you know, in an entirely different environment as a black person looking at you saying, well, that's easy for you to say, you know, what I'm saying? so so I would be curious about. You know, and that, that image of your pops playing bongo saying shine and without fear is like a beautiful thing. Like the, the messaging yeah. in there and the, the oh, example yeah. of that is a beautiful thing. But have you had places in your life where you've had to put that to the test, where you felt like, ooh, I'm up against it? You know, and then you all are still young cats, so I'm asking you something that's, kind of, you know, might be a little yeah, bit yeah. deep. But have you have you had moments where it's been like, ooh, I'm up against the thing and I can choose this way or this way and I've I've gone this way? gone gone through the fear definitely i would say i don't i don't really want to get into specifics honestly but just to give an example there there's scenarios where us we have abandoned honestly as a family we've had to go i'm trying to formulate this way no, it's okay talking. you can be vague i get i get what you're trying to say you can talk in, like, in general basically, we've had to come out because we know that this is going to help other people who've gone through the same thing as us to take a, a strong stance on like calling some people out for racism mm -hmm. and like it's hard because it's calling out your friends sometimes mm -hmm. it's calling out people who you honestly respect otherwise mm -hmm. yeah. and that's definitely been one where like damn that like yeah. it, it takes some thought it takes some like 
mental preparation mm -hmm. and then dealing with like the repercussions after of just yeah, like sure. damn like yeah friends anymore i didn't want it to get to this i just we had to say this because if yeah. we don't you're not gonna know you're gonna yeah. keep on going and treating people like this so yeah i'd say definitely like Talk about on racism has been one of those things and definitely finding the right timing to do that yeah for sure and, um yeah definitely and like, like the right the, way the to right do way it. to go about it and then like with love honestly like that's our main thing is like you can educate people in love mm -hmm. it's just like some topics are very not even just this but just some topics hit so close to home that's hard to not be emotional mm -hmm. and like you maybe you should be emotional but it's hard to not be angry honestly and yeah. that's where that's definitely one of the things where we're like yeah this is yeah so i'm life. here i'm picking up what you're putting down so I, I can so here we are it's august in 2020 in the united states of america and the tail end of covid and all of the unrest and people in the street and all the conversations about race that folks have maybe not been having as much of, right? So I can, I'm can i having the same conversations, right? We're all having these talks right now about what's, where do we stand and what do we say? And um, uh, so I'm curious about that. You just kind of turned that corner now. So how have you all been in these times specifically? So in the, in the heels of George Floyd, because this, this, this whole conversation for me got started with Ahmed Arbery before we even got to George mm -hmm. Floyd, right? I was, I was here, I have a good friend of mine in New York who does a lot of this kind of, um, social justice work and he's in black spaces mm -hmm. all the time having kind of recovery conversations and, and, and the community empowerment conversations. And meanwhile, I've been in corporate spaces having the kind of diversity and inclusion conversations, typically with white folks, yeah. You yeah. Know, about how we put more seats around the table and do all that. And, and after Ahmed, I kind of pivoted to start coming, having conversations with folks that look like me mm -hmm. about what we can do to empower ourselves and live into what you were all are talking about around shine and and how to live fearlessly or live yeah so that's what this is all about yeah like in that realm what what needs to be done but for me Percy was the hardest thing to do mm -hmm. is to come out publicly mm -hmm. and that's what we had to do in the situation I'm talking about and that's where it's like it's easy to go and I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't do this you should still do this but going to one person or like a group of two people and like, hey, can we talk? But it's a whole other thing to have like a movement of change mm -hmm. put behind your name, yeah. back behind you, right. where like that doesn't escape you. That like this is yeah. you forever. This is like your message. And it's a good message, but it also comes with its fair share of conflict that you have to be willing and ready to take on. Yeah. I think you have to be to an extent, probably careful with the way you go about it. That way people yeah. don't feel like attacked or anything. Yeah, definitely. So I know that's something, I think our parents in general, from time when we were little, have definitely taught us a lot about like, just kind of like treating other people. Mm -hmm. So when it came to this topic, we, we, we never got to the point where it was gonna be like an aggressive thing to bring mm -hmm. it up. Or mm -hmm. even though inside you might feel like very angry or sad with some of the things people have said and mm -hmm. some of the racism that we've all experienced, but it was definitely, a, it just like you were talking about, it has been put to the test. And it has been because there were times where I felt, and I know probably my brothers as well, definitely did feel a lot of like anger and sadness and heartbreak. Mm -hmm. But and even just like fear of like, I know I need to say something, but I'm also the only one here experiencing it. So like, I don't want to do this by myself. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. but that's just like, yeah. Just... And, I, and I think the best way to do that, at least in my opinion, the way that I found was to really be like respectful and not make it an anti white thing. I think mm -hmm. just make it very pro-black thing but also just make sure that when you're explaining it to other people other people that aren't like other white people mm -hmm. to make sure that they know that this is not an attack against them yeah it's not sure. an anti-white thing that we're not trying to fight this racism with more racism it's, it's like, like the opposite yeah opposite. we want to like to bring you into my love. world and kind of you know mm -hmm. help you understand what we're going through and what we experience on a daily basis and the random looks we're getting all the time walking around and mm -hmm. people staring at you when, when you go to the beach and i, I think mm -hmm. what our whole mission is right now is to to really show people that black people come in all shapes, different sizes, mm -hmm. and different mindsets, and want to different world, different yeah, worldviews, yeah. and that yeah. really like the portrayal of black people that maybe has been mass produced is not necessarily the only truth, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think if we can change, there's a that, lot of people that are that aren't like that, and yeah. like mm -hmm. it also we want to show that everyone's life benefits from peace. Mm -hmm. So it's like. If we do this, none of us have to be feeling mm -hmm. like a bad type of way. Like it's beneficial for everyone. So like just mm -hmm. listen. And yeah. that's like the main thing is like this is gonna help everyone. This is gonna help the world. 
we're all people the goal is to help people live in harmony mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's funny, the spaces that I find myself in and what I am hearing and what you're saying, Jordan, is kind of engineering empathy, right? Like, well, how do you get into a space where, I, I love what, the line you just said, you know, not fighting racism with racism and figuring out what that middle ground is. And in this country, particularly, you know, we're in an election cycle and it's so polarized, like that can oftentimes be hard. And I'm here in Poway, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty, you know, conservative space and not yeah. a lot of black folks walking around in this space. And um, so, so have you, you know, what tools do you bring to that? You know, and, and, and I, I mean, you all again are getting started right now, right? And you're getting on the path. But one thing that comes up in the conversation I'm having is the reality that this has been the conversation since before Martin Luther King, yeah. before yeah. Harriet, you know, a long that's time. Like the, that's a good point. Like, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's like a big thing that we like weighs heavy on us. It's like, this also isn't just a season. Mm -hmm. of like racial unrest yeah. this has been going on as long as we've been alive longer than we've been alive longer than our parents our grandparents like mm -hmm. that's the other thing that to in order to have like lasting change you have to understand the past as well absolutely and it's been interesting even to hear some some of my friends and people i'm close with say things like oh, yeah the it's, question. Been, it's, been, it's been like oh it's been getting bad i'm like no it's, <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's, always, it's always been bad you're just yeah. not realizing and the fact that it's like, in your face. we even have people that question that racism like still exists, mm -hmm. like yeah. just a lot of people. Yeah, like, kind of most people. And sometimes people are in, able to see that like in in our world, and they're like, we're not different. Like this is the experience for Black people. Like, but like, what we can do and what we're trying to do is kind of stuff like this. It's like first, it's the music. Yeah. Like let people into our life, let people into our world, mm -hmm. see our message through our music through like what we're doing. But then it's just like having a conversation mm -hmm. and like like a call to action or like mm -hmm. anything like that, where it's like, okay, you saw this, you know who we are, mm -hmm. that's cool. Now let's get real. Yeah. So speaking about that, so you just turned the corner a little bit there into kind of what action looks like or what it is to kind of put your hand to the plow, if you will. Obviously you have a platform that you're building. So, you know, your action can look like you know, what Marley's action looked like, just singing it into people's hearts, you know, mm -hmm. what I mean? you know that, that music permeates our household. It's so I feel like, like relevant for the day, man. Oh yeah. That's like that's on from grandma to mom. Seriously, yeah. that dude's like my whole worldview. But anyway, outside of that, are there things that you have been either following or inspired by in San Diego in particular or in terms of an action thing, you know, engagement. Again, I realize this is early for you all, so I don't expect you to be in the streets doing all the things, but have there been things that you've shown up for or look at and say, yeah, that there feels aligned with us? One really big one that actually just, it's probably pretty niche right now, but the message is so like broad, but it hits so close to home for us is the, the Black Surfers, what's it? The yeah. San Diego Black yeah. Surfers Association. Yeah. yeah. What? There's such a thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like, we're, we're they, they reached out to us like two months ago after our first single dropped, and they were like, "We really love your music. We actually want to use you guys in the documentary. We'd love to get um, get you guys out here in the water with us too." We were like, what? "There's a whole association." Yeah, we had no dedicated idea. to Black people in San Diego surfing. Like, this is awesome. Yeah. And, and like, just the reaction that we had and that you just had it's, yeah. is the reason why we want to be a part of that. And they're like making our best effort to be a part of that because like there's so many black people in just southern california who would see them and be like wait what yes <laughs> yeah, let's do that. and like it would be cool to have i mean right now the depiction of like i mean you grow up and you're like oh these black people play basketball they play yeah. football and like you know you go from a young kid you're like oh i want to be like obj you know yeah. i want to be but like it's not bad it's not bad sorry. But if they saw it's us, so like, small. we want to be, oh, we want to be like Lenny, we want to be like, damn, they're surfing. Like, you know, know, like a young yeah. man, like, you never think that you would aspire to be a surf. Exactly. Mm -hmm. rock music. Sure. Exactly. Like, we need more people like Prince in our, like. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. I see you, Lenny. I see you looking at me like, I'm going to take a risk right now and say this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Prince broke all the barriers. You know, we were just talking <laughs> about him around here. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So you just gave me a, t you know, I'm, I'm pivoting from this conversation going right there. I have a dear friend, a uh, black pastor, traditional black church in this town. He's from Virginia. 
Oh, and okay. his boys are, are little and they're starting to surf and he's so discombobulated like he's so his idea of black life is not that and he right. doesn't know he doesn't know what to do with it so I, I actually sent him a link to you all i'm like look man black surfing is a thing come, come on hit yeah, so, so i'm gonna have to send him a link to the san diego black surfers association yeah, that's, gonna sure. be, that's gonna be phenomenal so uh, are you out of school or like, what's, what's the, what's that look like? What, what are you, uh, what's, you know, we're in these COVID times. What are you about to go on the I, road? You know, it's kind of hard. I kind of took my time, but I just graduated college like a month ago. Okay. And so, then I am currently, oh, I'm taking a leave of absence this semester, but I study at the university of San Diego. Okay. Uh, business and psychology. Okay. And I just graduated from high school mm -hmm. in June. Yes. But, um, kind yeah. of. That was a kind of. Was that a bummer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just kind of there, and then it was gone. That, but, uh, I mean, it's like well, it's how it is now. It kind of is. Uh, that was, like, was, was like, 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 uh, like a homeschool program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I left okay. junior year to kind of start pursuing music pretty heavily. Yeah. So I, I was. It, it didn't really mess up my school situation okay. too bad. Okay. It, okay. it kind of helped me like accelerate the process a little bit. Okay. But yeah, our graduation was a joke. That's true. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was like a drive-through. You, you just drove yeah. to school, got your got your diploma, drove out. <laughs> it was still cool. Though. Yeah, it was cool though. though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Car, was cool. What's that? Yeah, we set up some balloons on the car. We we, we did it yeah. on <laughs> That's the best we could all do right now. Yeah, right? yeah. That's the best we could all do. Then I got lucky because I got to walk last semester, but then I was just sitting on one unit for a year, and then things started getting kind of crazy with the music. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get to, it. I'm gonna get to it, and then I finally finished it this last month. So it's like, yeah. it's fun. So Ooh. what was what do you think? What gelled it? Because I see, you know, that last video. It's not Sherry. It's another one, right? Is that's it that's What's that? Uh, I think you're talking about custom made. Yes, that's almost to a million views now, y'all. I see yeah, it on yeah. YouTube, right? Like that's pretty lovely. So, what, <laughs> yeah. what what gelled? Like what was the like? Boop? You know, was it getting the? Because you you went and got directors and the like the the packaging. I looked at. Ooh, that that that's nice. You all look. Uh, what nice. really gelled it? Like it took. A, this was a long time coming, mm. and now it's so cool that everyone gets to see two songs but there's like like a hundred songs that have been in the works for the last like 10 years wow. so we've had to go through so many it hasn't been just like boom here we are yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's been so many different levels that we've had to make to to get to mm. but i think what really made it gel like the most legitimate is mm. when we met our manager chris rosa oh, and yeah. he just like having someone to back you who believes in you mm. and he was also like big in the music industry really helps and just an honest man filled with integrity exactly. yeah it's, hard, it's sometimes hard to find that in the it's, it's it's really really hard those to, are the steps find. was going through those um, steps are yeah that's just us trying to find people to work with that are honest and yeah. that they do what they said they're gonna yeah, do like really. and every time chris says he's gonna do something he does, he does you know, it. we're like how the heck are you gonna do that Every single time. So it sounds like you're saying that from experience. I'm watching your faces like, it sounds <laughs> yeah. like you tried this. Like there, there's been a couple misses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been, there's been, there's been some misses. Wow. So, yeah, he's been, we've been working on this for a long time. Like the songs that just came out have gone through those, those steps. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't like those songs out. were written like three years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which is like, you get to see, we, we've learned so much about how the music industry and entertainment industry actually works. Yeah. Like it's it's rare. It takes ten years to be yeah. overnight success. Like the stories that you see that are overnight successes are completely yes. manufactured. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I like that line. It takes ten years to be an overnight success. Yeah. That's real, right? That's real. It's like the ten thousand hours thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So do you all know John Keith? John Keith, that sounds very familiar. So there's a rapper guy from San Diego named John oh. Keith. John Dang, Keith. Still, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna right send you a link to him at some point too. He's so on fire. It's like ridiculous. He's he's like in Christian hip hop lane, but oh, okay. but he rides right on the like. Ooh, he pushes the boundaries. Like it's not um, you know, watered down. It feels it feels strong and and yeah yeah. And uh, anyway, so I, I I'm just you know in the realm of. Uh, Black folks moving in San Diego. I, I offer you that, that dude. That's cool, yeah, we're, we're gonna look. We're gonna look him up. 
Yeah. 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 So I'm looking at the time. Let me check. I know you you're up against it. Oh, we got like 15. Yeah, we got, I got to I got to like right around like 12:55. Okay. Okay. All right. So did your did your parents like push this? So so I get the gel happens when you got the right management and you found the right people. But in terms of let's do music together, we three brothers. Like how did that how did that happen? Our parents like maybe they secretly pushed it, mm-hmm. but from where we're standing, they they just presented us music. Like yeah. they gave us music lessons. They've always been so supportive. Yeah. The love of music came from us. Where we, we've just been obsessed. With like music. literally, yeah. since we could make noise come out of our mouth, yes. we've been obsessed with like singing. And I think our parents saw that. And anything that we love, our parents are super invested in. So it could have been anything, but music just because we have such good parents and they saw we loved it they definitely like facilitated us yeah. doing music and then our dynamic as brothers honestly our parents really helped us with that too so i guess it does come yeah. back to them Seriously. but we like they, they never came to us and said dude you guys need to be a band of brothers yeah. it's gonna be so dope we just kind of knew like yeah we work so well together and we gel yeah. and like making music together is better than making it by ourselves that we just naturally did it and then after the fact our parents were like that's magic keep yeah. doing that you guys realize what you have like how hard it is to like have all three members of the yeah. family and it took a it. long time for us to take that seriously honestly yeah. like it wasn't okay, that's what i'm that's what i'm getting after cam like when, when was it like for the three of you like ooh, well yeah actually dude i i think it was like mr paul mr paul was a phase so we all started taking uh music lessons at this place called rock university uh-huh. and this this guy paul bartlemy would come to our house, teach me and Lenny guitar, mm-hmm. and uh, one of his instructors taught Jordy drums. And he taught Jordy drums. Yeah, and, 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 and he taught Jordy drums too. So we started off playing like rock and roll. We're playing Green Day covers. We're talking Led Zeppelin covers, yeah. yes. Nirvana covers. So that's what really opened up. And Metallica. Our yeah. 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 Like, and Metallica. Yes. We were never trying to like playing like traditional black music. Like we were honestly just playing everything, yeah. whatever we wanted to. My, we saw that on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I was that. That's playing salsa music in the kitchen, like everything. Yes. We're, we're vibing everything. Wow. And then um, we kind of outgrew the program a little bit and we would start playing lo- local gigs and stuff like that. Okay. But we, we never took it super seriously up until we met with this guy named Rex Kudo. Mm-hmm. He's a producer mm-hmm. for in Post LA. Malone. And, yeah, and he, he produces for Post Malone, Kodak Black, mm-hmm. like all these Juice guys. World. Juice Juice World. World. That's yeah, like yeah, the yeah. biggest one. And we honestly didn't have that much experience in a studio like that. How did you run across that guy, though? Oh, that's a cool that's story. That's a good story, yeah. Our dad was just doing a business meeting in Nobu, and yeah. over here is Rex, just like, he's a very large in the life personality, and he's just talking about all the products he worked on. So my dad, just being my dad, walks up to him, he's like, hey, you do music? Well, first, dad gave it to grandma the seat, because, you know, dad was standing. Oh, yeah, true, true. So, like, he, like, helped, it, he, he helped his grandma with something. And then that kind of opened the door to talk. And then our dad was like, oh, you do music. My sons do music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he told it. Total classic story. Yeah, yeah. Total and then, story. then Rex was like, like he told us as persons, like, honestly, I was like, people do this to me so much. Like, I was kind of like, okay, that's cool. Like, yeah. That's then he just randomly opened it and was like. He called our dad oh, literally yeah. like a couple hours later. He's like, can we get your studio, I mean, your boys to come up to my studio in Malibu. We had no idea who Rex was. So we, what was it? Was it like a, a video of you all doing a cover or like- It what? was, if you, you can look it up on YouTube. There's something called Comma Sessions. Yes. Before, we even, before we were even called We The Commas, yes. there's a YouTube thing called Comma Sessions. If you just type that in, yeah. C-O-M-M-A Sessions. Yeah. And it has like six acoustic videos of us just like singing songs that we wrote. And then like a couple <laughs> covers. Got it. From years ago, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, was super young. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And he saw it and he was like, wow, like you guys harmonize really, like this is just insane. You, it was a pretty incredible experience to have someone of that caliber of music tell us that we were special. Like that really like hit home for us. He's like, this isn't like a pipe movie. Like you guys mm-hmm. like are really talented. You should like do something with this. And you recorded wow. a couple songs for us. And that didn't end up like going too far. Yeah. But to be able to work with him and to get that experience and that music, confidence. Yeah. That confidence. Like the right person tells you to try it and do it, yeah. it changes everything. It, yeah, yeah, that was life changing for us all. That was like it was different. Different. just like our friends or our parents, like someone yeah. who actually had made it, made it in music. Yeah. And didn't owe us anything. Yeah, didn't, didn't know us. He's got credits of our favorite songs and he's telling us like you guys are superheroes. You you have yeah. to do this. So then how did you, so, okay, so there's, there's milestone one, like, ooh, legit, 
like Cosine? And then yeah. how did Chris happen? I think Milestone 2 is like, basically having that taken away exactly. from us because then we had to be like dude if we just saw that we can do this and we know we love music we're making a way for this to happen no matter what so mm -hmm. then we just went through like this is this is when i left my high school and decided to do homeschool mm -hmm. got it and i got like a little computer set up in my room and started messing around with logic logic and me yeah, and my friend yeah. gave me a crack the room where you're right now but yeah gave it to Cam. And really. we started going crazy making songs every night i just stepped over the program and that eventually over time evolved itself to like moving down to the basement we have like a studio and stuff down there oh nice. so we started just making our own music like we were like hey, we don't need anybody but don't rely on if we want to do this music stuff we're just going to do it yeah. and that led us to this guy from a small tiny label that he started hitting me up on Instagram called mm. like uh, Anara Records. Yeah, the label is called Red Umbrella. Red, yeah, Red Umbrella. Okay, all right. We're real small and they, they hit us up and said like, we want to work with you guys, like yeah. just come up and make some music with us. And we were super down, like we, we, had, we hadn't gotten a legitimate contact since Rex Pito, so we were all for it. Yeah. We made a couple songs with them and that creative process was dope. We made a bunch of cool songs, like mm -hmm. Cherry we made with them mm. and um, a bunch more that, a bunch more that, that. that come mm -hmm. but that didn't work out necessarily in a benefit the like like business side wasn't it wasn't bad but it just like it didn't make sense for us so then that was the other lesson that we had to learn of like how to say no mm. and then that literally one of jordan and cameron's friends who also does music mm. his manager knew chris from like a long time i don't even know how he knew, how yeah. she knew chris but like it was a connection through a connection. Yeah. And then the same thing like with Rex once. This time though, we actually went up to Chris's house in LA. Mm -hmm. He was like, okay, play me something. We're like, okay. okay. <laughs> we played some acoustic stuff. He's like, all right, let's do it. Like, yeah. Yeah, he, was, he was thinking about just helping us on the business end. Yeah. And then he, we went to his studio and started playing. And he literally was like, I had this at 50 and I was like, you guys are incredible. And I don't want to give this to anybody else. Cause I think I really know how help you guys. Like, like, I'm, I'm the best this. person. Like, I think I, I would be the one that could do this. And so he didn't, usually he's passing people off to other people to help them get connections. Mm -hmm. But he takes care of the business end. And on this side, he decided to step in as a producer as well. And it was like, I'm going to get your guys' music. Mm -hmm. That was incredible for us. Because there was the follow through with that as well. Mm -hmm. He does everything. Like he produces it. He manages He's us, the one that makes the music up. videos and gets all crew. So then, you know, how then, so on the business side of it, how do you consult, you know what I mean, to figure out what deals you're doing and how to arrange Basically, all that? Basically, we have two managers, I would say. Yeah. Our dad is incredibly business savvy just because, like, that's been his life. He's been really high up in the business world. Yeah. And then him combined with Chris, who knows the music industry, yes. having both sides of it has really helped. And then from there, we have a whole, like, marketing team and PR team. Lawyers. Yeah, it. but it started with them too. Of like, one person knows business, like amazing. Then one person knows music, everything, amazing. And they came together and just built a team. Yes. Oh my goodness, that is fantastic. So now yeah, sky's the limit. I'm about to see what's gonna happen. This is gonna be exactly. fantastic. Yeah, we're excited as well. We're excited too. It's been a, it's a long process. Like mm -hmm. the the building of this team has taken a long journey, and it, we're just now really settling in. Like. That first release, Sherry, was kind of like the announcement to the world and to the public that like mm. we're actually doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. We said that we're doing music. We haven't been like posting and tracking all the stuff, putting on our Snapchat what we're doing, yeah. but we're actually for real going to do this. Yeah. So that was kind of like after we put out Sherry, that was like the last turning point. Like, okay, this is real. There's no going back. We're doing. It. Yeah, definitely. That was a nice. Yeah, that was a nice experience because it goes from like you just graduated college, you're going to do music. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to like oh, a million views. You guys are doing music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, you know what? I tell you what, this has been um, a pleasure. I'm so tickled to have Likewise. Yeah, this, 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 this is, is awesome. awesome. Honestly, you're just so cool. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, your like, this is awesome. dope. Like, I would want to hang out once it's like safe. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. I pre you know what it is? I think, you know, if I have a, a spiritual gift or something, I really 
almost feel like vicarious energy around when I see, it's almost like when you watch the Olympics, you know, when you watch the Olympics and you see someone doing a thing that they were like built to do and you're like, damn, that is good right there. Yeah, like, I feel that so good. So you all, it feels like that. Like when I see people doing the thing that they were here to do and they're in it and they're running for it, it's just, you can't help but be inspired and feel uplifted yourself. Uh, 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 thank you so much. Yeah, thank thank you so, so, cool. so much to us. Thank you.